Have you ever decided to do something really big? Like learn how to play guitar or uh, oh, make friends with the new kid down the street. Maybe you even want to bake a master chef worthy cake for your mom's birthday. You're super excited to get started, but then you sit down with the guitar and or you spend all morning working up the nerve to go knock on the new kid's door, and it turns out he's gone for a week of summer camp. Then you find the recipe for that amazing cake, and it's crazy. Doing big things takes work. It takes making a plan and then sticking with it. There are calluses along the way, patience and courage in building a friendship, and definitely some mess. But when you follow through, you find the music, you grow a friendship, you create amazing edible art. And through it all, others can see how God has given you the strength to stick with it. That's why commitment is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. For me a good you hold my future you're working all the time you're the mountain mover from sunrise to sunset till the sun comes back up again you're by my side you started a good work in me i know that you will complete it you will see
What are you doing, John? Trying to finish 5K. You know that's not how 5Ks work, right? What? There's a lot of fiber in this. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And yeah, now that's how 5K is supposed to work. Way to go. John. I'm Brandon. Welcome, Welcome to the So and So Show. Brandon and I have committed to run a 5K. Why? I'm not sure. Someone thought it was a good idea. Ah, uh -huh. well, when you commit to running a race, you need to make a plan on how to get yourself ready and stick to that plan. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do one of those training apps that you can get on your phone. There's there's one called Couch to 5K that mm -hmm. looks really good, but then John said- I said we couldn't do that. No app is gonna prepare us for the ups and downs, the peaks and valleys, or the ebbs and flows of running a race. Have you ever actually run a race? No, no. but that's, that's beside the point. Racing is like life. You never know what life is gonna throw at you. Mm -hmm. It's unpredictable. Yeah. So I developed a training course myself that will take us through unpredictable situations in multiple climates, so we'll be prepared for anything. The real race might throw at us. Okay, but you know that we're running the 5K in the spring on a city street. Okay, so let's talk multiple. more practice. Come on, buddy. Let's go to the course. High knees, high knees. Sigh. Okay, why, why are we doing this? There's no way we're gonna be running in the snow, right? Because you have to be prepared, Brandon. When you commit to something, you have to be ready for any outcome. And we have had some late spring snowstorms. When? You know, in the spring of 1970. It is not gonna snow, John. <laughs> you can't predict the weather, Brandon. And switch. Oh. Oh, now we're in the desert? This will never happen. What? We, we, we can make a wrong turn in a race and end up in the desert. Oh, flying cactus. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. oh, and switch. Oh. Seriously, John? This is getting out of hand. Practice. Wow. Makes. Oh. Perfect. Oh. And switch. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, this is more like it. This is what we should be training for. Wait for it. I want what? my two dollars! Ow! What was that? <laughs> it's a paper boy. He's ruthless. Huh? Oh, heads up! What? Ow! <laughs> Can we stop now, please? I think we're prepared! Two dollars! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're that prepared. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh. Look out! Whoa! Hey guys, uh, what's going on? Oh, we're training for a 5K. Yeah, we're practicing commitment, duck. Oh. Ah, <laughs> well, that's what I'm talking about today. I mean, not running and dodging newspapers, but the commitment part. Oh well, great, take it away, Kellen. This comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. Now, 1 Corinthians was a letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the Jesus followers in the city of Corinth. Paul wrote the letter to encourage people to stay committed to living the way Jesus would want them to live. This letter is like a speech a coach might give a team to really get them pumped up. It starts like this. In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Pretty inspiring stuff, but I think we could do it even better. Help me out, cheer squad. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? Are you ready to commit? I was born ready. Mm -hmm. Who is ready to run this race? I am. Who is ready to run this race? That's me. When you are running, here's what we advise. You should run in a way that will get you the prize. Awesome.
some. But just to be clear, I don't think Paul was telling us to go out and literally start running. Really? Really? Really. I think Paul was comparing our lives to a race. When you're in a race, you do the best you can, right? It takes commitment and practice. But when you're running with a goal in mind, the finish line, it's the same with your life. You should try to do the best in life. It'll take commitment and it'll take practice. But the goal should be to live your life like there's a prize at the end. Now, Paul gave us a hint in what that prize could be. He wrote, all who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Now, the people reading this letter in Paul's day would have known the kind of crown you could win in a race. It would be made of leaves or pine needles, and it wouldn't last very long. But Paul wrote that Jesus' followers should be running for a crown that will last forever. Take it, cheer squad. Yo, Jackie! Yeah, CD! Do you want to win? Always! <laughs> win me a race gives you a crown, but it will not last for long. So run with Christ and you can't go wrong. Woohoo! That's Great cheer squad. Now that we know the kind of race we're training for, the question is, how do we train? How do you practice life? Well, you can start with these four words, hear, pray, talk, and live. Hear means we should practice hearing from God by reading the Bible or listening for his wisdom. Pray means we should practice talking to God, telling him how great he is and asking him for help and forgiveness. Talk is practicing talking about God with others. It's asking questions when we don't understand something and sharing the good news with people who haven't heard about Jesus. And live means we practice living for God. We try and think about God before every choice we make and do things in a way that honor Him. That's how you train for the race of life. Let's hear one more from the cheer squad. Ooh, hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? I'm ready to lace up my kicks and oh. run this race. I hear you. Let's slay this thing. On your mark, get set, go. Are you in? T-H-A-T race Are you gonna run like you want first place? Are you in T-H-A-T race? Then practice like you mean it and you'll be an ace Are you in T-H-A-T race? Remember four words that will help your case Are you in T-H-A-T race? Hear, pray, talk, live, now start today Thanks, cheer squad. Woo! Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I think I'm ready to run the 5K now. I think I'm ready for anything now. Two dollars! Oh, hoo -hoo! see? <laughs> it's true. When we train, when we practice, it prepares us for things, well, we might not see coming. You just gotta remember those four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. That's great, Kellen. Hey, thanks. You bet. See you next time. Bye. You know, it just occurred to me, we should get one of those running apps you can get on your phone. It'd be way simpler. <laughs> you ever hear of Catch to 5K? Reveal the question. How does practice help you? John? I practice soccer all the time. And now I can do this. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Thank you. What about you? Uh, when, when I practice playing an instrument, it helps me learn it so well that I can do it without even thinking about it, like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who doesn't love the beautiful tones of the mouth harp? Right? Yeah. <laughs> what about you? How does practice help you? In sports or at school or in life. Talk about it together and we'll see you next week for a brand new show! Yay! <laughs> Name that tune. Okay. It's the theme to name that tune. Yeah, you got it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the paper boy's back! 
Oh! Okay, no, no, stop it! Switch! Give him his two dollars! I don't have the, I don't have any pockets! Oh, now this, oh, we're getting attacked! They threw an ostrich! What? How dare you! They're flightless! Ah, okay, ow. switch! <sighs> oh, good, a living room. Oh, yeah. yeah let's see what's, let's see what's on. Oh, marathon. Oh, great. You ever been to a marathon? Can they do CG couches? 